George Fenwick, the crusading newspaper editor who never forgot his working class roots in industrial Sunderland. George Fenwick was born here at Bishop Ware's mouth, Sunderland County, Durham in 1847. This was then at the heart of England's industrial northeast, just a few blocks away from the shipyards on the River Weir. His father, Robert, was a master cabinet maker with a workshop of his own, but also passionately committed to the Chartist cause and closely connected to some of its leading activists. As revolution swept through Europe in 1848, England's conservative establishment clamped down hard on the Chartists, spurning their calls for universal male suffrage and a secret ballot, banning all public meetings and imprisoning key Chartist leaders under special legislation rushed through Parliament. Now dismayed by these developments and attracted by news of gold strikes in Victoria, Robert Fenwick and his wife set sail for Australia at the end of 1851 with their four young sons. Robert Fenwick had no luck on the Australian goldfields and with deteriorating eyesight was encouraged to cross over to the gentler climate of Otago when the Otago Provincial Government began recruiting for immigrants in Melbourne in 1856. He set up in business on Bell Hill as a building contractor and enjoyed great success through the early years of the 1860s, also winning election to the Dunedin Town Board, which was the precursor to the Dunedin City Council. But things turned sour for him in 1866 after business difficulties and the death of his wife, and Robert relocated to East Tyree, where he operated a hotel. George, meanwhile, completed his primary education in Dunedin and then picked up an apprenticeship as a printer with the Otago Witness in 1859. He went back to Australia for a time in the 1860s, but then returned to Otago with a number of partners began a business venture with a newspaper in Lawrence. After they were bought out by their competitors, they decided to move the enterprise further inland to Cromwell. George famously rode through the night with 500 copies of their final Lawrence edition, but now sporting a new masthead as the Cromwell Argus. And within 36 hours, he was busy distributing them here around Cromwell. Fenwick returned to Dunedin in 1875 as a partner in a printing business. The following year, he became manager of the Otago Guardian newspaper. And a year later, took control of the Otago Daily Times in a clandestine reverse takeover deal. He spent the rest of his life at the helm of the newspaper, becoming its editor as well in 1891. He doubled its circulation by cutting costs and introducing new printing technologies. And he also developed the New Zealand Press Association as an agency for newspapers to share their stories across the country. Under his leadership, the Otago Daily Times played a major role in the community, campaigning for numerous public causes and social reforms, especially the banning of sweating practices in the New Zealand clothing industry that would have delighted his father's Chartist comrades back in Sunderland. George Fenwick married Jane Proudfoot in Dunedin in 1874. The couple were to have eight children together. Jane was the sister of David Proudfoot, a prominent Dunedin engineer who was responsible for the city's first water supply, the railway line from Port Chalmers to Dunedin, and Dunedin's first tramway system. George was knighted in 1919, but ironically it was by the Imperial Government for his fundraising efforts on behalf of the unemployed in England, rather than for his many good works in New Zealand. And no doubt that testifies to his enduring memories of a working class boyhood in Sunderland, as well as his appreciation for the greater opportunities he had enjoyed thanks to his parents' decision to immigrate to the colonies. So George Fenwick died in Dunedin in 1929, aged 82. His wife Jane died nine years later, aged 86.